Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back and I'm going to do a gear review video. I know I haven't done one of those in a while, but I thought today was a good day to get out and do a review on the new DJI Mini 2. So this is an upgrade for me from the original Mavic Mini. So we're going to go through all the features of it, the improvements on this over the original, uh, the pros and cons, and I just want to give you guys my honest opinion on this. I'm not endorsed or sponsored or anything by DJI. I bought this out of my own money. I'm going to give you an honest review. Um, if there's anything bad or weaknesses or things that you should know about this, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I like this drone. It's an awesome drone for me. Maybe it won't be for you. Maybe it's good for a beginner. Maybe not. Um, I'm going to give you all the details and you'll have to come up with your own conclusion if you think it's good for you or not, but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to be totally transparent and tell you how I feel about this. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, here we go guys. So here's the DJI Mini 2. It's in its folded up compact form. This is a, an idea of how big it is. Fits in the palm of my hand. So this is really great for me because I can put this in my backpack with the rest of my camera gear. The controller, it is bigger than the original Mavic Mini controller, but it's a lot better. And it's just, it feels nice. We'll look at these all a little bit more in depth here. So here's a uh, battery packs, extra ones. Here's two batteries here. One battery is already inside the drone. So this comes with the fly more combo. You can get just the drone and the controller and it comes with a few other little accessories. I recommend the fly more combo package because it comes with the extra two batteries, extra props, uh, and a few other things, so it's it's worth the extra, I believe, $100 uh, or so. But this is what I carry in my backpack with me. This came out of my backpack with the rest of my camera gear. So besides this being compact, what makes this so great is that it's under 250 grams. And you might be wondering, well, why is that so important? Well, it depends on the country or area that you live, but here in Canada, under 250 grams, you don't need to register this or get a license to fly it. You still have to be responsible and fly it only in places drones are allowed because there's plenty of places that are still restricted no matter the size of the drone. So make sure of your country's rules, laws and regulations. So here in Canada, yeah, we still have lots of restrictions on where you can fly a drone doesn't really matter of the weight. You still have to be responsible. You can't fly it in national parks. Uh, you certainly can't fly it near airports or heliports. So there's certain distances that you need to be away from those areas. So the best thing to do is to download some apps or uh, go to your government's website and just get all the information that you need and make sure you're flying in an area that's not restricted or prohibited. Because if you do and you're caught, well, you can pay some heavy fines. Also, because it's under that 250 grams, well, it's going to be small. So I'm going to always go back to that compact size. For me, that's a major win. Should this be considered a beginner drone? Well, we're going to go through some stuff here, and I'm going to give you my opinion. If this is a beginner drone, if this is good for you or not, pros and cons. So yeah, we're going to find out here. So how this is better than the original Mavic Mini? Well, first up, longer flight time. So this is rated at a battery time, flight time of 31 minutes. The original Mavic Mini was, I believe, 30 minutes. Now, realistically, you're not going to get 31 minutes out of this. In the real world, everybody's going to have different run times. Uh, like here today, 
it's negative seven degrees out right now, which is actually below the range that DJI even recommends flying this. So with batteries in the cold weather, you're gonna have a drastically reduced runtime. So it's about the same, I would say, the battery time between this and the original Mavic Mini. Um, the battery that comes in this right here and it's a 2250 milliamp hour battery I think the original Mavic Mini had a 2450 and I mentioned this earlier 4k camera that's going to be the biggest thing for most people uh, is that it can shoot 4k videos at 30 frames per second and it can do 100 megabits per second the original could only do 2.7k at 30 and 40 megabits per second so there's a pretty big difference there. But this can shoot in JPEG and RAW now. The original one, you couldn't do RAW uh, with the camera with photos. This can also do two times digital zoom in 4K and four times in full HD. Um, the gimbal is the same. It's this three axis gimbal. The original one was great, so this one will be just as good. So it has an upgraded flight range of up to 10 kilometers. Now, are you gonna fly this little drone out 10 kilometers? Well, you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be line of sight, but it's capable of that range. So now it uses what's called the OcuSync 2.0 transmission system to give you that better, more stable connection. So it just gives you more peace of mind now when you're in the air that you have that better connection so it also comes with the new remote control. And it's the same style as the Mavic Air 2 drone, which just came out. So it's nice that this little drone has the same controller now as their higher tier drone. It's a really nice controller. I think it feels good in the hand. It is less compact, it is bigger, but it's nice how your phone connects to the top now above your controller. before your phone used to go below, down below, and it was more awkward to kind of put in there and hold. Um, so this is better now. Plus it's gonna have better battery life. It has a bigger battery. And yeah, your antennas, before you had to open up your antennas and make sure they're pointed right, now it's integrated in. And it goes with that OcuSync 2.0 transmission system. So this is a really big upgrade right here to this controller. Okay, and then it unfolds like this. So you gotta unfold those ones first, and then these ones flip down and back. And there's the drone fully open. And on the back, it's got USB-C now, which is nice. The old one had micro USB. Your little micro SD card right there and the battery is right in there. Overall the size and dimensions of this are almost identical to the original Mini. The only difference really is in the front you also you have a light now an LED light and you can actually change the color of that so it has like a light that you can make flash or steady right on the front. The gimbal and the camera actually looks just the same as the original, except it is now 4K. And it shows right on there, 4K. Push that and it will show you the battery capacity in there. It lights up, shows on the side there, ultra light. 249 grams. I weighed this just like this, ready to fly. It's actually 238. So it's well under that 249, which is nice. These are actually open now, so they actually will take air in through those intakes now, I noticed. And the propellers, uh, they look a little different. They have orange tips now, but they're pretty much the same. You say it pretty much looks identical to the original. So the next thing it has is a higher flight speed. 
comes with a maximum flight speed of up to 57.6 kilometers an hour. So this is a good jump up from the 46.8 kilometers an hour max flight speed of the original Mini. So that's due to the new improved motors that it has. Um, so those motors have more power now. So it has a level five wind resistance of up to 37.8 kilometers an hour, which is much better than the original that had 28.4 kilometer an hour max wind resistance. So once again, that would be because of the new improved motors. There should be less problems with people getting into trouble with wind and a flyaway of their drone. Now, you can still get yourself into trouble. I mean, you have to go with the capabilities of what this little drone can do. It can only do so much, regardless. It's small, it's light. You have to listen to what your fly app is telling you and what your drone is telling you. Um, if it's too windy, don't take the chance because you might lose your drone. So some of the software features that this has, um, it has a, mostly the same as what the original Mini had. Um, there's quick shots. So there's a boomerang, droney, helix, rocket, circle. Then you also have a panorama mode now. So on the quick shots, the new one is boomerang. Um, and I'm gonna give you an example with this in the air of all these quick shots, just so you have an idea uh, of what they all do. So the Mini 2 allows you to view live video at 720p and 30 frames per second on your phone. It has a quick transfer mode now, which is new. It doesn't need to be connected into the controller or anything, just your phone next to this and it can download um, at 20 megabytes a second, which is a pretty good transfer speed. And you also have the ability of a trimmed download, so it lets you quickly cut out a segment of your footage to edit and download. So just a couple last things here I'll show you guys. So here's your joysticks underneath here. So you take those out. And they screw in here. They also give you extra ones of these too if you ever lose them. So yeah, what I like also about this is they have the cable underneath here now. So it's nice and you can tuck it away when you're done and it's always right here on the old mini it was separate and you had to make sure you didn't lose it or because there was nowhere really to store it on the remote like this so that's a nice feature and now your phone sits up like that and you plug this in here so it's nice now that it's your phone, your display is up above you now instead of below. So I really like that. But anyway, I think that's enough going over some of the features and improvements. I think what you guys really want to see is the drone in action.
So do I recommend this for a beginner? Yes and no. Um, it just depends on the person uh, and what you plan on doing with the drone. And if you can understand the limitations of the smaller drone compared to the bigger one. Um, this doesn't have some of the safety features that the bigger drones do have. So that is one of the limitations of it. So a lot of people talk about this not having obstacle avoidance. It does have downward sensors, but that's it. Mostly for landing, but yeah, it can detect things below. It doesn't have front or rear facing sensors. So when flying, it's unforgiving. If you're gonna fly into something, it's not gonna warn you, it's not gonna stop, nothing. It'll fly into an object and you will crash. The bigger drones aren't foolproof either. They have sensors on them, but you can still crash those. Those sensors aren't perfect, but they can be a big help. But those other drones are a lot more expensive than this. So that is the one big complaint that I hear from a lot of people with this mini drone, no obstacle avoidance. So that's where you have to make that decision. Well, why didn't they just put obstacle avoidance in this and it would be a perfect drone? But you have to understand what you're paying for. If they gave this every bell and whistle that the higher end drones have, why wouldn't everybody just buy this lower end drone, not need the more expensive ones then? So you'd be undercutting your higher end products as a business, which that is the main reason I think they didn't put sensors on this. Also, it might be due to the fact that of the weight, to keep it under 250 grams, it probably wouldn't have been possible or it would have been very, very difficult. So I think those are the two reasons why they didn't add obstacle avoidance to this. Also, yeah, one of the other limitations of this is because of its weight and its power, you can get into trouble. Some people have gotten into trouble in high wind conditions where their drone flies away on them and they can't get it back and they lose it. Uh, so if it gets too windy, you get warnings, bring it back home, do it another day. If you keep it up there, you have a chance of possibly losing that drone. You know, try dropping its altitude. Maybe it will be fine, bring it to a different area. But if it's just too windy, don't take the chance. So for me, I recommend this drone for everybody. As long as you're aware of the limitations that I just mentioned. Don't take chances in bad weather and high winds. And be careful when you're flying close to objects until you get used to it and you get more experience. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. And I hope I gave you enough information for you to make a decision if this drone is for you or not. I know for me, I love this drone um, and I can't wait to use it more and show you guys a lot more footage coming up. So yeah, if you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you out there on the next adventure. See you later.